Welcome back to this room to continue our uh, IDEA 3G Diversity Day, now with the luncheon. I see that you are all eager to get to the luncheon, so we want to kick off our formal program at the very beginning. It is my great pleasure again to ask our president, Clay Maury, to welcome you and give some introductory words. Good day, everyone. I hope your meetings went well this morning, uh, and it's nice to see so many of you here at lunch today. Um, this is the IDEA 3G Plus. Oh, sorry. Here we go. That's me. Uh, and uh, luncheon that we've hosted now. Um, so back in 2016, my, my, uh, my former boss and my mentor uh, and the predecessor as IAF president, Jean-Yves Legal, uh, implemented uh, uh, this idea of, of, of 3G diversity. So ge geography, um, generation, and gender diversity. And it's been really at the heart of this organization now uh, for several years where we're pushing these things. And we had uh, uh, this wonderful breakfast this morning. But it really means a lot to the organization uh, as we continue to try to be as inclusive as we can uh, to broaden this to, to be diverse and inclusive uh, so you see this at every level. Um, I think there were some very interesting remarks uh, earlier this morning about uh, from the young from the young next generation committee about how it is. And you know this was um, a lot of different things were happening during the organization. Uh, one thing I'd mention is SGAC being elevated uh, to the status of IISL and IAA uh, in terms of partners, uh, working partners for the federation, uh, and really elevating their congress that they've hosted so so many years. So it's, it's been wonderful to see this evolution, to see uh, young people and uh, people from all over the world being more included. And so thank you, Jean-Yves, for starting this uh, initiative. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Jean-Yves Legal uh, to make some remarks. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. IAF President, Mr. IAF Executive Director, and uh, dear friends. Uh, first of all, uh, good day to all of you and bon appétit, even if you didn't start to eat. And uh, I am uh, very glad to be uh, with you uh, here today because, uh, as uh, you know, this lunch is a part of uh, ID 3G Plus uh, Diversity Day. ID, of course, uh, stands for International Platform for Diversity and Equality in Astronautics. And uh, we established it uh, a few years ago as a part of the uh, IAF agenda, FRIG, FRIG for Gender, Generation and Geography. And uh, I proposed this agenda in 2015 when uh, I was elected uh, IAF president. That year, the IAF was held in uh, Jerusalem, and uh, in that uh, legendary and allowed place, such a small place with so many things uh, have happened, in the words of France former uh, President François Mitterrand, it became clear to me that uh, we also needed uh, to start making things happen at IAF. And uh, for at that time, uh, nearly nine years ago now, everyone agreed that IIF was an assembly of very distinguished gray-haired gentlemen, as me, represented only a tiny fraction of the world. And with Christian Festinger, to whom I would like once again to pay tribute for his dedication to our federation, we decided it was the time to change this perception and reach out to a broader and more diverse audience, the gender in 3G, with uh, all colors of air for generation, and that our, our federation should represent uh, all regions of the globe for uh, geography. And so the agenda 3G, as a matter of fact, the gender, uh, generation, geography, it made uh, 3G. It was born, and uh, I must say that uh, its success even took us by surprise. Clearly, it was uh, what the world world uh, has been waiting for. And by the next uh, ISC after Jerusalem in uh, 2016 in Guadalajara, Mexico, the effects of 3G were uh, already starting to be felt, 
as the composition of attendees was plainly very different uh, to what uh, had come before. Elon Musk himself noted this change since it was in front of this uh, very rejuvenated audience that he came to present uh, what was then dubbed the BFR for uh, our big uh, Falcon rocket. Some other people use other words, you know probably that. <laughs> Later uh, to become the starship that today is transforming the conquest of space. As a matter of fact, I was in uh, Satellite 2024 last week in uh, Washington, D.C., and uh, clearly the Starship was in the center of all the talks because after the successful flight which occurred a few days ago, everyone understood that we are now entering into a new era and I understand that the next flight of the Starship should occur uh, in a few weeks from now and probably it will confirm uh, the success we saw uh, something as uh, 10 days ago. But so uh, the presence of Elon Musk uh, in Guadalajara was uh, only the start. And uh, since then, the ISC has been hosted uh, in Dubai by uh, the United Arab Emirates, in Baku by Azerbaijan. Uh, the IAF already took place in Baku 50 years ago, but not in the same country, the same city, but in, not in the same country, because 50 years ago in 1973 it was the USSR, and now it is Azerbaijan. It will uh, soon go to uh, Antalya in Turkey, and uh, this is a series of firsts uh, that we've uh, and been uh, unlikely before Agenda 3G. We now have members across all continents and uh, maybe even across the galaxy. If uh, E.T. wants uh, to join us, uh, we will welcome him with open arms, of course. Our membership uh, is uh, getting uh, much uh, younger and uh, you know how pleased I was when uh, we elected my friend Pascal Ehrenfreund as uh, IIF first female president just before Clip. So uh, to conclude, I would like to congratulate you for making uh, what was still only a dream in uh, Jerusalem and it comes true today. And now we can uh, add IAF's uh, Agenda uh, 3G to the list of uh, momentous events in uh, that uh, legendary place, Jerusalem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaif, uh, giving us this uh, view back on where it all started and how it has developed. Now, at this point, actually, you should not see me, but you should see actually our Vice President, Lionel Suchet, presenting you some concrete figures and data on how we have developed over the last few years in terms of implementing the 3G idea. Unfortunately, he has a conflict of schedule with the ESA Council, so he asked me to present on his behalf the, uh, the, the, the pictures and the, uh, the, the data which I'm very happy to do. And I realize that I'm the only thing between you and lunch, so I will try to be <laughs> as concise as possible. So we have looked into, um, I've asked my colleagues, Constance has put together a very nice presentation on how the data confirm whether we are on the right track by looking into what happened over the last few years at the IEC in terms of 3G. So we are looking into the three Gs and we start with geography. So how has that developed? And you see here, starting from 2015, Jerusalem, as Jean-Yves has mentioned, where we had 59 countries represented. In 2023 in Baku, we've had the new record of 132 countries. So you see the tendency, uh, and we hope, of course, this is continuing, we expect to have also a huge turnout from all over the world in Milan. And I think in this respect, we can be proud. Now looking into more details, you know, the submission of abstracts for us is also always a very important uh, indicator on how our community is getting involved with the technical program. And also here, what you see starting from 2015 up to 2023, 
We don't have the figures here yet of 2024, but I've just checked and it is a new record with um, 106 countries. So authors from 106 countries have submitted abstracts and you are aware already of this new record of 7,000 abstracts received this year. So it's not only the, the number of abstracts we are pr so proud of uh, that is steadily growing, but also the reach and the, the diversity here. Now let's look into the next uh, G, which is generation. And also here, you see, starting from 2017 to 2023, the evolution of the average age of attendees at the IEC is getting younger and younger. So the average age uh, is, or has been in 2023, 36 years. So we are far away today to say that the IEC is a gathering of gray-haired eminences and and and. Uh, more and more attractive really to a younger audience. Uh, now, uh, if you look into the percentage, the overall percentage of young generation people, and if we talk about young generation, it's below 35, but um, out of the overall participation in the IEC, you see that in the last three years, we have consistently been above 50%, reaching almost 60% of all participants at the IEC that are below 35. Now, students, this is a very specific, of course, uh, community amongst the young generation. Um, and you see here the evolution of the submission of abstracts coming from students. And this is also a remarkable increase over the last years, confirming that we, uh, the effort which uh, we've done to reach out to the next generation, to raise their enthusiasm and be brave enough to submit abstracts, um, has really paid off. Now, the last three uh, 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 of the three Gs, which obviously and unfortunately seems to be the most difficult one, uh, also, we are also happy to see that also there we have made uh, some progress. I mean, you see here in green uh, the male and in red the female distribution uh, or participation at the IECs. And if we go back even to 2016, there was a gap of 60% between the two and the participation of female were at 20% only. Of course, we cannot be happy still with only a 30% participation we have reached now in 2023. We need to do much more in order to kind of close this gap more and more. But just to at least uh, show you that there has been some progress. And if we look um, again at the abstract submission, which, see, uh, which again is, I think, a very important uh, indicator on how engaged the female community is getting into the technical program. There we even see a bit of a, a, a slightly better even development. But again, there is still a lot to do. But I want to, to close actually with a slide that will show you that these three Gs are all interconnected. So if you remember, red is female, green is male. On the right-hand side here, you have 2022. On the left-hand side, last year, 2023. And if you look then into the different age groups, you will see that uh, the gender equality here in the younger age group, of course, is much better than in the older, I would say, uh, age groups and I think this is also understandable because a few years ago or many years ago at uh, if you look back some 20 30 years uh, ago females were not at all or hardly ever involved in space activities today I think the, the paradigm is a bit shifting and we have more and more female people uh, women that are choosing STEM uh, education and getting also in the in the space arena. So I wanted to close with this one just to demonstrate that it is uh, important to look at these three G always in a complex. They are intertwined together. And I want to assure you that at least we from our secretariat, uh, with our leadership, with the bureau, with the president, we are continuing on this path and do everything we can in order to promote really these three G, specifically also the gender uh, part where I think we still need to go a far way in order to 
present to you maybe in a few years something that we can be more proud of as today. Thank you very much. I wanted to close with this. Uh, again, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, our box is still there. Drop any, any of your suggestions. We will very carefully analyze them afterwards. And now I wish you really a good lunch. Thank you.